my friends, and welcome to another installment of Dylan and the Details. We're here to get down to the brass tacks about Dead Rising today because, well, it's George A. Romero's birthday. And I tell you what, it's time to bow down to the king. Because he's the king of the dead. He's, he's the master of horror who created all we see today with Resident Evil, Dead Rising, The Walking Dead. All that would not exist without this man, and it's just time to pay our respects. And although he never really had a striking game come out, I mean, Land of the Dead Fiddler's Green was alright. This, right here, was the ultimate zombie experience for me. I never hyped a game more than this. I mean, I looked at footage relentlessly over and over again. The footage we're looking at right now, in fact, it, it, it blew my mind back then. These graphics were the shit. And although it's not entirely polished now, it still stands as a testament of what they were doing back then. They were ambitious game developers back then. And frankly, I'm not sure we're going to get back to that point. But I wanted to look on the bright side today and talk about how much this it, it hit the nail on the head so well. I don't think we'll ever get anything like this again. I mean, perhaps. I'm not expecting Dying Light 2 to uh, come to fruition like they hope, but you never know. I'm trying to be optimistic these days about zombie games and such because, I mean, although the genre has been beaten to death and bitch slapped nonstop, it, uh, it still compels me. And since uh, Resident Evil has been quite hitting that mark for me, I'm hoping that perhaps Capcom can make that home run and come back with a proper Dead Rising. Because this is Dead Rising. This is the ultimate experience, and I just wanted to talk today about it. I think the most satisfying part of this intro, perhaps, is the mystery element. I don't think we're given that enough. You know zombies are coming. That's the title of the game, pretty much, Dead Rising. You know what's coming. But... The way it draws us in and paces it out perfectly is just a, a master of work. And if we could just get back to this level at Capcom, I think we could please a lot of people and sell a lot of games, make a lot of money. If that's really what's, you know, what it's all about, hey, it's a great idea. But getting back to this footage we're watching, this introduction of perfect, masterful design, we're given small glimpses of what's going on. But the mystery element remains. We can see people are being attacked, possibly eaten, devoured. But we're here to investigate. We know something's going on. We need to get down to the brass tacks and find out what the hell is happening. And here we go. I, I love testing out the mechanics of the camera. Like, I, I feel like we haven't gotten that really. I, I played the shit out of Dead Rising 4, and it's truly not great, but I don't remember doing much with the camera and capturing all these points. I'm not sure if that was a thing, but here it's very prominent, it's how you level up, and <sighs> you can save these pictures. It's kind of cool. Like, back then, 360, 2006, not bad. And... Moving forward, I think if Capcom could potentially get the disaster element back, the, the fact that this is a apocalypse of sorts, this is a small apocalypse happening, I feel like lately Capcom has been releasing small events instead of these large-scale events. And... The map size in Resident Evil 2 and Resident Evil 3 really wasn't that big. And I'm not saying this game is huge, but it's definitely a lot more detailed, a lot more going on. A lot more nuts and bolts, really. And this horrific... Oh my god, when I seen this dude, I was like, wow, that's that's fucked up. Like, I mean, what what's more scary than a bunch of cannibalistic strangers attacking a bus full of who knows what? Like, goddamn, that's scary as fuck. But I just love that this intro 
it doesn't tell us what to think or what to feel or what to do. It's not telling us to take pictures. We choose as the gamer what, you know, is worth taking a picture of. And to me that's fantastic. It's it is on rails, but it's not forcing you to do anything. It's just giving you information, simple as that, a nice little tutorial. And damn, you know what? That explosion and fire, that looks a lot better than some of the fire I've seen these days. In fact, it's better than cyberpunk, better than... Oh my god. I swear, game developers used to have it. You know, man, maybe maybe things used to be easier to ve develop for, but this, this, you know... I haven't seen something of this quality in quite a while. I'm hoping eventually we can see something like this again. You know, maybe one of these smaller developers will come out of the woodwork and be like, hey, you know what people need? Uh, a new survival horror game with zombies that actually makes sense. And, you know, tests you in different ways, new ways, and is fresh. I'm hoping eventually that'll happen, but if not, I can always look back and love this game. It amazes me that this level of creativity hasn't come back to us, but the fact is, this doesn't seem like an easy thing to do. It seems like kind of a difficult thing to do. I mean, you're capturing so many different uh, things, uh, so many different faces. Somehow this camera is capturing every single uh, zombie within range, and that's pretty incredible if you ask me. And as you can see, the prestige points made a difference. Capturing certain things at certain times really helped out a lot as far as leveling up goes. I didn't really feel that effect in Dead Rising 4. I, I honestly can't even remember if there were too many camera mechanics because it really felt hollow as a Dead Rising title and I don't really feel there was all, ma all that much freedom. I mean, you had a larger town to mess with and drive around in and do stuff, but it's not always about size. It's more about how you work with what you have. Instead of pushing out so much, like such a huge environment, and you're driving these huge vehicles, sometimes less is more. Man, you are nuts. All right, listen. Don't forget to come back for me. If there's anyone on this earth that can tell me what is in that case, this has been bothering me since day one. Since I seen this footage, I have been bothered about what is in that case because we never learn about it. We never get out to that spot in the parking lot, and I, uh, I don't think we ever see that case again. And I've played the shit out of this game. I, I got all the endings. And that's something I'd also like to discuss sometime. How many different endings there are and how different they are from each other. I know there's one real ending, but I really love the fact that this was the beginning. This was the first game, so there wasn't, you know, any high expectations. We just went in kind of not knowing what it would be. And Dead Rising truly is one of those titles that is going to be hard to top. I mean, despite whatever flaws or ugliness the graphics might have, I think this is one of the most solid entries Capcom has ever made into the survival horror genre. And I do call this survival horror, by the way. I mean, it is not exactly your typical survival horror, but you have to consume items to stay alive and... If you have the uh, second mode, which is like unlimited or whatever, you actually have to consume food and it runs out. And I think that's fucking badass. Well, if it were just a riot, I doubt the military would quarantine the entire area. The moratorium on information getting out is a little extreme in my opinion. There's, uh, something else I can't put my finger on. Doesn't sound like civil disobedience. It's too quiet. <laughs> Almost as if everyone's already dead. 
Now that is what I'm talking about. Yeah. The writing is where it's at. I know this is sometimes kind of weird throughout, but the writing is there, and they really hit that home run. This, my friend, is hell. Absolutely incredible. They've done something so simple as take a normal horror movie trope, and they've applied it here in Dead Rising in a way that makes sense. And it's not typical, it's not average, it's a great build-up. Oh my god, please, if we could get back to this Capcom, I am begging. The complaint I've heard the most was easily answered by Crobcat in his video about Dead Rising. If you don't like the time limit, if you've got some kind of problem with the time limit in this game, all you have to do is not play the story. You don't have to play the story. If you just want to fuck around and have, you know, endless fun, just kill shitloads of zombies, which I've done, by the way. I've ignored the story completely and killed the first character I could find. And you know what? It's a fun experience either way. But the story is hella compelling, incredibly. Just, it, it's a twist, you know? I, I bet, I bet right now, not too many of you can remember how these zombies were created. You know, they've got the T-Virus, and they've got, you know, the, the, the God thing. They're, they're coming back because of God. Oh, no. Like, bro, this is a totally different reason. And I love the fucking reason, too, because it's so 2006. It's so, like, dude, just... Yeah, if you don't know how the zombies were created, I'll talk about that in another video. But right now, I just love to talk about the fact that we just got a great little cutscene. And this this is played on the Xbox One HD, by the way. This version is fucking great. Because so far, I haven't experienced anything wrong with it. And the loading times are absolutely incredible. Incredible! I tell you what, for, for what we get here, the, the loading time is fucking badass. Like... <laughs> they hit that home run, so far at least. I've played the Silent Hill HD remasters, and I've heard so many bad things about them, and the audio having trouble, and this, that, and the third. I'm glad that didn't happen here. I mean, so far I haven't experienced that. When I get further through this game, I will definitely let you guys know if there's problems, because that's the reality. I, I have to get down to the brass tacks, no matter what it is. I take my nostalgia glasses off, because this isn't just, you know, nostalgia here. This is quality. I care about quality. And that's why I talk shit about shitty Resident Evil, and, you know, certain titles that just can't go unacknowledged. Sometimes you have to stare at the turd on the floor and say, hey, what's that? You, you can't just allow it to stay there and fester god no but a, a few annoying npcs aside this game has a lot of great characters and everyone is different in their own way i'd say this has the most character out of all of capcom's games e everyone is their own person everyone's a little more obnoxious or a little more quiet a little more reserved and some of the mysterious characters are the best in all of Capcom. And if you don't agree with that, agree with me on this. The zombies are it. This is what a zombie is. Like that guy just said. If you don't know what a zombie is, well, take a look at that. Because frankly, I, I, I've seen very few zombies this good. They're dead. They're half-eaten obviously grayed out skin just disgusting life forms no longer people everything uh went out the window once they turned and this is fantastic they're calling them zombies too it's like you know no fucking around here capcom doesn't fuck around uh, i love the walking dead but let's get down to the brass tacks those are zombies guys everyone's seen a zombie movie and most of the ones i've seen involve george a romero and thankfully the man with his time on this planet gave us fantastic, incredible, beautiful titles like Dawn of the Dead, Day of the Dead, and of course I can't not say Night of the Living Dead. 
one of the best horror films ever. And the reason I say that isn't because of the quality of the film. It's because how they created it. They had such little money and so many problems, but they did it. They got it done. And that's incredible. Getting content done, that's where it's at. And hopefully, if Capcom can someday return to this beauty, this incredible, uh, thriving, just a, a, a plethora of things going on in this game, I would love to get back to that. Because this is one of the most incredible experiences ever. The fact that we're in a mall, just like Dawn of the Dead. And I'm sure if you haven't seen the original from the 70s, you have seen the Zack Snyder remake. Which, you know, it's its, its own thing, that's fine. But you know the mall setting is iconic for a reason. It's, it's kind of like this. When you turn, what's left of you seemingly wants to return to a pretty much routine. You, you want to go back to your routine, do the things you did while you were alive. Yet you hunger for flesh, so you come to this place where you once enjoyed your life, and you're looking for another meal. And it just so happens to be human flesh. But of course, we can't go without talking about the mysterious characters that seem to be behind the curtain. It's, it's hard to tell in the beginning, and that, that's the thing, that's the thing. In the beginning, we're given so many hooks. We are hooked. We want to know who that old man is, who that beautiful woman was, all the other characters, the man on the roof, and coming up is my favorite character in the whole game, and he, he was in one of my favorite cutscenes I've ever seen. I love how that old woman, that tiny old woman, pushed away those big-ass guys. But, you know, this is kind of quirky experience. The thing is, it's so balanced. And here we go, Brad, a badass character who just kicks ass the whole fucking time. And in, in one of my favorite cutscenes I've ever seen, he has this fight scene that is just so good. And it's so simple and just straight to the point. They, they duke it out, and it really just, it, it grabs you, dude. And here we're given our first taste of freedom. And of course, the first thing I do is take a picture. And I mean, that, that's pretty funny. Like, the psychological aspect of, hey, do you intervene and try to save these people, or are you going to take a picture? Well, I think I'm going to take a picture, because they seem kind of doomed anyway. Look how many people are there. Jeez Louise. And this was, this was the first zombie game that had this many zombies going on at the same time. Each zombie is its own entity, and... That's that's badass. I, I I don't think the zombies have been this good in long time, long long time. Dead Rising Three was probably the last time these zombies were this good. But for this video, I just wanted to discuss with you guys how much I appreciate George Romero and all he did. Thanks for sticking around. If you got this far through the video, have a great day, and let me know if you'd like more long form content.